House of Representatives left town, they passed a new defense bill. Every Congress for the last 50 years, every Congress through thick and thin, wartime and peacetime, in times of scandal, in times of shutdown, in years where there were impeachments and assassinations and terrorist attacks and everything else we've been through for the past 50 years, every Congress for 50 years has been able to get it together to pass a defense bill. And even though this Congress has officially been the least productive Congress of all time, the House at least did, at the very last minute, before they left, they did pass a defense bill. And the Senate says they, too, at the very last minute, will pass a defense bill. It'll be the last thing they do on Wednesday of next week before they go home for the year. And as part of the by-the-skin-of-their-teeth strategy that has them passing the defense bill at the last possible second, negotiators from both parties and from both houses of Congress have agreed that basically no one would be allowed to make any changes to the bill. So even though there had been talk of putting in an amendment to go after Iran in a way that would have screwed up the new nuclear deal with Iran, even though there had been talk of putting in an amendment to have the Congress weigh in on when we are leaving Afghanistan, instead of only the Afghan government weighing in on that, even though there had been talk of an e even stronger series of new rules about sexual assault in the military and how it's prosecuted, by virtue of the fact that this is a must-pass bill and that time is running out, None of those changes is going to be made. Not yet. Not this year. Not with this bill. We know what's in it. We know it won't change. And we know it will pass. And don't tell the Beltway press. Seriously, don't tell them because I don't think they've noticed it yet and they can only screw it up. Don't tell the Beltway press. But the new defense bill that is going to pass on Wednesday is almost secretly going to pave the way to empty out roughly half of the prison at Guantanamo. President Obama's campaign promise and then his order to close Guantanamo have been stymied all these years by Congress. Congress refused to appropriate funds to close the prison. They refused to let prisoners there be transferred to the real court system here. They passed elaborate and confusing restrictions on even transferring prisoners to third countries or back to where they came from. And those restrictions on transferring prisoners are why a majority of the prisoners at Guantanamo have been cleared for transfer to some other country. But they're still languishing in Cuba at our strange third country prison there at an average cost of $2.7 million per man per year indefinitely. That last category of congressional mucking it up, those restrictions on prisoners getting transferred to their home countries or to other countries that will take them, those are the restrictions that are essentially getting fixed in the bill that is about to pass Congress and be signed into law by President Obama. President Obama gave a speech in May saying that he would renew his administration's efforts to close the prison. After that speech, his White House Chief of Staff, Dennis McDonough, took a field trip to Guantanamo along with Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein and Republican Senator John McCain. They all pledged while they were there that the prison would be closed down. President Obama then appointed a White House senior staffer and an envoy from the State Department and an envoy from the Pentagon, all with the same mission, get this prison closed down. The administration has since started what are essentially parole board hearings to clear more prisoners for release after careful review by all the top tier intelligence agencies and security agencies in the government, including the military. When Barack Obama ran for president in 2008, it wasn't just him and all the Democratic candidates for the nomination who said they wanted to close that prison. It was also the current president at the time, then, who said it should be closed. It was also the Republican candidate who Mr. Obama was running against in that election. Everybody agreed that it should be shut down. And so if you told anybody back then that five years later, in 2013, that place would still be open, nobody would have believed you. But it's still there. And the new defense bill will not shut it down, but it will allow for it to start to shut down. It should clear the way for about half those prisoners to leave. It's finally happening. And the political momentum to do it got a huge shove this week from an unlikely source. When the U.S. government decided to open Guantanamo as a prison in late 2001 and early 2002, they called on a U.S. Marine Corps general who'd had experience at Guantanamo before in the early 90s, running that site as a camp for Haitians and Cubans who'd been intercepted while trying to emigrate to the United States. After 9-11, General Michael Leonard got the call again. He was given four days to set up the first 100 prison cells on the island. Within seven days of that initial order, the first prisoners were on site. And he was the first commanding officer of America's newest offshore prison at Guantanamo.
Now, 12 years later, retired Marine General Michael Leonard is speaking out. He wrote this op-ed for the Detroit Free Press this week, saying that as the first commander of the U.S. detention facility at Guantanamo, he now believes that not only is it time to close that facility down, he says it never should have been opened in the first place. Joining us now for the interview, for his first television interview since retiring from the Marine Corps after 36 years, is Major General Michael Leonard. General Leonard, thank you very much for being with us tonight. It's a real honor to have you here. Thank you, Rachel. It's good to be here. What are your impressions of um, the steps that may be able to be taken in the next year or so to try to get Guantanamo closed down? Is it your impression that you think the facility could be closed under the legal authorities that exist now? Uh, Rachel, I think uh, that right now we're at a moment in history where we have an opportunity to close Guantanamo for good. Uh, the National Defense Authorization Act is a great first step. Senator Levin wrote uh, some very practical uh, language into the act that would have allowed us to completely close it. As you've already pointed out, what we'll be able to do is to have simpler rules in order to uh, move those detainees that have been languishing for some cases up to 10 years uh, and get them back to their country of origin. He was joined by Senator McCain who brought in bipartisan support. As you've already pointed out, we have uh, envoys and representatives at the White House to make this happen. And uh, now is the time in history that we can uh, reverse this blot on, on, our, uh, on our history. To hear you describe it as a, a blot on our history and to read your op-ed this week, I was struck uh, that, that you as the, the commanding officer who was in charge of setting up the facility in the first place uh, thinks now that it never should have been set up. We, it never should have existed. Why do you believe that? Well, Rachel, I think that there's a number of reasons and it starts with our Constitution. Every service, every officer in every branch of the service takes an oath to, the, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. It's my personal belief that the Constitution does not end at the water's edge and that uh, as a nation, uh, we have to walk, uh, walk the walk, not just talk the talk. Do you think if the political steps and the, logis the logistic steps uh, were taken to shut it down that, that could happen over the course of the next year or so. Do you think that there would be resistance within the military? Do you think that having seen so many members of the military serve there in the kind of capacity that you served there, people working as guards there, the kinds of detainees who have been held there over the years, do you think that there would be a sense within the Pentagon or within serving forces um, that, there, that the kind of de political decision ought to be resisted? Uh, Rachel, the, the military is the least of my concerns. First off, we have the greatest military in the world. Uh, the, the one concern that I've, I've heard expressed, obviously, is uh, the potential for recidivism. Uh, and it is certain that uh, if we release those detainees that have been uh, already designated for release, that you know we've had a certain percentage in the past that have gone back to the fight. But our military is the best in the world and is ca fully capable of, of finding those that elect uh, to go back to doing bad things. Uh, quite candidly, uh, the, the military uh, was not designed to be jailers. Uh, we, f we fight our nation's battles. Uh, we're ready to see Guantanamo closed down. I'm speaking for myself, but uh, uh, you know, many, many uh, uh, senior military leaders have shared with me that, uh, that, you know, that they feel that it's time to close Guantanamo. Retired Major General Michael Leonard of the United States Marine Corps, the first commander of the U.S. facility uh, at Guantanamo Bay. Thank you very much for your time tonight, sir. Your contribution to this debate, um, I think, is a really is a, is a landmark thing, and I know it took bravery. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks. All right, we'll be right back.